Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Katerina. I work uh, in a Slovenian company uh, named Arctur. Uh, nice to see you here. Um, today, uh, oh, somebody comes here. Um, yeah, today we'll talk about uh, Motion Notes tool for uh, video annotation. Um, and here we can learn how videos in particular of tense can be effectively announced and how 3D uh, can be brought into the workshop. Um, and um, it's a pleasure to give a word to the first speaker. OK, thank you, Katrina. I'm Carla Fernandez, and um, I'll be presenting the work we've been developing as partners of, of WEAVE on behalf of uh, the new University Lisbon. I will present the team, of course, and now I'll share just three or four slides, OK? Um, are you seeing the slides now? Yes. Yes? Okay, so this is um, Nova University. It's actually the second biggest in terms of our public universities. And um, uh, both me and my colleague Nuno Correa, we are inserted in these two um, research centers, Nova Links and uh, EC Nova. Um, and this is just for you to see uh, the headquarters of the rectory where where we work because we have different faculties. I'm at the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities and Nuno Correa is at the Faculty of Science and Technology. And the team is this that I'll, I'll be presenting and they'll be talking as well. Nuno, Rui Rodrigues, João Diogo and Stefan Jurgens. Uh, actually, I will uh, leave this then, of course, for my colleagues to present the demo, but just to frame it uh, in the sense that this video annotator has been developed already since uh, the other previous project of this same CEF facility program uh, called Culture Moves. And um, at that time, it was um, transformed from a standalone application to a web-based one, a tool. And uh, the focus has been always in um, intangible heritage. So the difference being that normally in projects of uh, um, cultural heritage, we tend to see much, much more, many more assets and projects around tangible heritage. And in this case, the focus was on dance. In Culture Moves, we were working with contemporary dance. And now in the we've, we've worked um, only with traditional Portuguese dances. Uh, because we have a partner in this uh, Portuguese uh, consortium, so to say, who is Ped Shungu and who are um, working on the preservation and documentation of um, uh, Portuguese traditional dances all over the country. Uh, so I just would like to emphasize uh, the fact that when people think that it's uh, not so um, common and not easy to annotate and document events that are ephemeral and that are happening uh, just for once or, or twice without we are not ever being repeated in the same way. Uh, we thought that this should be also possible and in that sense we are very engaged with documenting and analyzing um, behavior, human behavior in creativity settings and that's why we are willing to do as much as we can for providing assistance to people who work with uh, moving bodies. Could be dance, could be as uh, as you can also see here. We've we've had people wanting to try this for sports, for education, journalism, and tourism. So uh, I will not go into details about the new version of the tool that we are um, presenting as the end of this. Uh, with a uh, project, but the, the basic uh, feature is that we are introducing uh, 3D elements, so AI algorithms are being trained to perform in the future semi-automatic recognition of specific gestures and movements, as they will then show in the, in the demo. And we are also working and uh, will be shown with the pose estimation of bodies in, in movements so that um, inferences can be uh, 
taken from what's going to happen or what is happening in a specific sequence of movements. Uh, we have recently published a paper that you can uh, read here. And um, this is actually uh, um, explaining, sorry, the development of not only the, the features of the tool, but, but also of a workshop we did with the experts in Portuguese traditional dances. And uh, Stefan will be uh, talking about it. So I think we we can now move on to, to Stefan. And I thank everyone attending, and especially also here the team for this uh, collaboration. And I'm really happy that we've reached a nice port where we've done what it was promised, what was promised, and uh, I think we can go on develop developing these in future projects as well. Thank you. Thank you. Also, oh, I'll stop sharing. So, hello everybody. My name is Stefan. Um, I'll share the slideshow with you as well. Just a second. Okay, hope you can see it. Need to go to the beginning. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about the co design session. And eventually, this uh, co design session gave rise to the article that we've published and Carla just mentioned. Um, we organized this co design session with two experts in Portuguese traditional dance forms of Pede Chumbo. And you know, you know, Marta Gerardo and you know, Joana Ricardo because they're also partners in the WEAVE project. So the session's goal was to obtain feedback from these experts regarding the novel 3D functionalities of our video annotation software motion nodes in the context of traditional dance forms and cultural heritage in general. Additionally, we elicited suggestions for further design iterations that could benefit the use case scenarios in the context of their work as researchers, as educators and practitioners in the field. So from our inspiring dialogue with Marta and Joana, we have extracted the following design ideas, musical instruments as 3D annotations, 3D object annotations as historical and cultural references and geographical mapping through the use of 3D object annotations. I'll start with the first one. So musical instruments as 3D annotations. The first type of 3D annotations presented to the workshop participants was, was the addition of smaller scale 3D models of musical instruments on top of a 2D, a 2D video layer. In our example, the appearance of an accordion, a triangle, and an adouf, which is a unique Portuguese type of tambourine, marked those moments in the video of a traditional dance called rancho, in which these instruments started to play. So our goal here was to enhance the perception of the musical accompaniment of the dance, as well as to let the users explore a particular instrument in a 3D environment to understand its characteristics. In the case of the Adufe, this intention was particularly justified since this instrument is fundamental in the context of Portuguese traditional music. And then 3D object annotations as historical and cultural references. Moreover, Marta and Joana suggested that 3D object annotations could be used to refer to the cultural and historical background of these dances. One aspect in this context is the use of 3D object annotations as historical references, which could help to better understand how the dance was performed, what kind of costumes were worn, which objects were used in the performance, or on what occasions the dance was carried out. A different yet related aspect could be the origin of a danced movement. For example, during the harvest time, the picking of olives is a gesture which has been incorporated as an arm movement in the traditional dances. Geographical, oops, still on the same slide, sorry. 
uh, geographical mapping through the use of 3D annotations. Last but not least, our workshop uh, participants mentioned that some traditional dances, especially those in risk of disappearance, may nowadays only be performed in a certain region of the country or differ in the way they are taught and performed in different regions. Hence, they suggested the use of 3D culture-bound objects that would help to locate these dances in specific geographical regions of the respective countries. Moving on to 360 degree images and video, uh, following our discussion of 3D object annotation, we presented an additional 3D functionality in our co-design session, namely the possibility to import 360 images and videos here in the equirectangular format, which can be visualized and navigated in the tool and combined with the other annotation modalities. So both experts saw great potential in the use of this 3D functionality for creative processes and visualization of technical aspects of dance performances. A frequent situation uh, is that choreographers, um, uh, the choreographers are facing today is the limited rehearsal space and time available during a creative process. So being able to acquaint themselves with the dimensions and characteristics of a studio space or theater space through 360 imagery could help them to prepare a rehearsal period beforehand. The same holds true for theater technicians who need to visualize the studio space or stage, ideally in combination with technical writers and floor plans. Our works of particip participants felt that 360 imagery could be very useful for technicians if combined with measuring tools and floor plans as available in some commercial virtual tour software packages today. However, the specialists also suggested that further development of these 3D functionalities could benefit the creative process. Being able to simulate or even rehearse parts of a dance could be very exciting. As a good example, they mentioned the dancer de Mastro. Uh, which is a dance of the pole, in which a huge pole decorated with the numbers of ribbon is maneuvered skillfully by the dancers in such a way that the ribbons are woven into colorful fabric. Studying those movement patterns beforehand in a 3D space would save the dancers hours of rehearsal time when they get to the real studios. So I've come to the end of the short report from our co-design session. Thank you, and I'll pass on, I'll pass the floor to my colleague Rui now. Thank you, Stefan, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, so I will, now I will present the, the tool. Uh, just let me share my screen. And uh, you can see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. So this is the the motion notes a landing page, the main landing page. When you uh, follow this URL, you will arrive here. If you are a first timer using motion motion notes, you will need to to sign up uh, on our platform. It's very simple. Just need the your name, email, password. You need to uh, check the 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 agreements, terms and conditions, and then. Uh, and most difficult one, um, <laughs> enter the, the, these letters to validate that you are a human person. This is a capture, and be careful with the um, caps letters. Okay. Then after the, the registration, you are good to you are good to go to and log in into the motion notes. In case that you already have a login but you forgot your password. Uh, you can recover your password. This is the regular procedure. You just send an email to your account and you, you, a few minutes later, you will receive uh, a link to um, enter a new password and then log in. Sometimes the emails go to the spam folder or junk emails. Uh, I don't know why, but sometimes it happens. Um, but you just need to go there and check. Okay. Then after that, you can log in into the motion notes. This is the main 
working area of motion nodes. This is a single page application, which means we don't have web links for uh, another pages. The work is done only on this interface. So let's explore the interface very briefly. Uh, up there, we have the traditional menus, menu file, where, where we can import videos. We can choose between uh, videos already available. Uh, we can use external URLs, uh, YouTube videos, European videos, uh, the, those ones that are available with uh, the rights. We can use or stream them uh, here in Motion Notes. Under the edit, we can copy paste the notations in select. On the view menu, we can customize our interface. The 3D menu, I will explain uh, later, but okay, this, the settings menu allow us to uh, change our input devices, to change our resolution and things like that, video resolution. And the help menu, uh, we have here links to the tutorials that are on YouTube. Okay, so on the left, we have uh, triggers for each type of annotation that we can add to our videos. We, uh, right now we can add, uh, we can draw over the video. We can add text messages over the video, short audio clips, um, URLs to different web pages that have information regarding the video. Uh, we, we can also add marks and uh, 3D models, okay? But I will show this one in, in detail a little bit later. So this is the, the main area in the center where the video will be played. On the right, uh, we have properties regarding the annotations, uh, like the, the, the line color, the line style, the, the font size. It's possible also to embed it, uh, embed our work in our blog or external uh websites i will show you later the pose estimation my colleague john will show uh how it works later and copy paste shortcuts for copy paste annotations the traditional playback controls also it's possible to record and annotate at the same time with this tool we can record i, I can demonstrate right now because Zoom is using my webcam, so it's impossible. But if uh, it's it's possible to record and annotate at the same time, okay. Stop video, play video, repeat mode, uh, jump between annotations, volume, and at the bottom, we have the annotation tracks. The annotation tracks are very useful because um, it's a visual, temporal, special representation of uh, each annotation that we add, add to the video, okay? But we'll, you will understand better with an example. So to exemplify this, I will import a video, okay? All the videos that we are using are from our partners, uh, project partner, Pet Shumbu. So this is a traditional Portuguese, traditional dance video, okay? And, um, we can add here some, a couple of annotations. Um, there is a, a case that we can highlight. If you note that the synchronization between the the the, the woman uh, and the man, the arms are not synchronized. So we we can add here. Uh, it's a possibility to add here an annotation to highlight this fact. So in future. Uh, rehearsals uh, improve this this uh, this synchronization so we can draw for instance uh, an arrow here and we can put a message like uh, uh, like this okay uh, I will change the the color of the text just to differentiate better Okay, and with this, let's replay again. Okay, this is a use case, a use case that I, I used to, I thought to the demonstrate here in this presentation. Okay, uh, under these tracks, it's possible also to, to change the duration of the annotation, as you can see here, and the start time. 
if you drag and drop the start time will change okay it's very useful this this feature just to tune tuning or to, uh, tuning the, the the specifications the time it's also possible to edit and this this one is even more specific the duration <laughs> uh that's okay um more it's possible to add urls so and then it's clickable over the video the url becomes clickable um and it's possible to add marks uh this marks is a different type of annotation it's not so common in other annotation tools we created this type of annotation because um since we can record and when we are recording we need to annotate fast if if we are recording and we want to highlight and we go to the computer and write it's it, it takes a lot of time it's not possible so it, we create this marks annotation type where we can very quickly add a, an annotation to mark this specific timestamp okay so it's possible to add the annotation and later on after the recording of after the rehearsal we can go back to the the, the marks and uh try to improve the the, the situation or the, the movements or uh what is happening um this is the marks annotation okay so for the for the 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 next type of annotations is the 3d annotation that we developed recently under this week project so i will show you with a different video i will take advantage for of the use case that stefan uh explained earlier uh, which is a, a ratio video. I will import this video. Uh, okay. And one of the, the useful scenarios, as Stefan highlighted before, one, one of the useful scenarios is to add the instruments to the, to the video as annotations so that the, the so we can enrich the video information and increase the information contained in the video and people that are wa watching the video have information about how the melody was created it's one of the the good examples that we explore in our paper okay so for that we have two options we can add our our own 3d models we can go to sketchfab or if we are uh, designers we can create them uh, or we can use the the models that are available on your our partners uh, website uh, with weaver with 3d weaver so it it's one of our partners in the, this project arctur we can use the model that they have available uh, if you don't know the 3d weaver website i recommend it it's a very good platform and it's connected with motion nodes so it's possible to use the models to annotate uh, our videos and it's possible to upload our models in this case specific case i will upload the the model so one of the instruments used is the accordion another one used is the guitar and the third one is the adoof Adoof, where is the adoof? Yeah. Okay, let's, yeah. This is the accordion. It's possible to rotate uh, to, to see uh, all the details in the accordion. Also the adoof, which is a Portuguese type of tambourine as Stefan referred. Uh, Stefan created this model. So thank you, Stefan, for creating this model. It was, uh, we don't find, uh, any model like this one available on in the internet so we created this one and also the guitar um yeah the guitar okay um to make this experience a little bit more um interesting we also uh um uh, take pictures to three three 360 pictures and it's possible 
to use the features to change our background. For instance, this is the Pechumbu Studio that we captured, we captured before when we had the session, and it's possible to see the models in the Pechumbu Pech Studio. Okay, so to, to, it's more a little bit more interesting, and in the future we want to explore this 360 uh, option as well. So let's add the instruments here. I think this is a good frame to add them. To add them is we just need to click in the plus and then we can add them and we can tuning the place and the and the zoom and so on. <laughs> uh, the other one, uh, the dude. Okay, and the last one, the guitar. Okay, the guitar. Okay, uh, okay, perfect. As before, we have the representations down the, here, and we can replay the video again, but now with the instruments. Yeah, make it give us the sounds, please. It will be nice for the audience, please. Let's see. Okay. No. And we can pause the 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 video, and if you want, you can see all the details of the three D model. Okay. And um, as before, we can add the other types of annotations together with this with this uh, with this three D type of annotation. Okay. Okay. So uh, let me see uh, more things. Um, it's possible to stream external videos as well. As I said before, it's possible to, to stream. I will, I prepared an example from Europeana. Let's see if the video is working. Uh, I have two examples here. Let's see this one. Uh, not sure if this one for some reason is not working. Let me, no. Let me try the other one. Okay, I think this one is okay. Okay. This is some random video with just for the sake of the example that um, as, as you can see that it's possible to stream videos from European. It's possible to download videos. Uh, not, not all the time the download button is available, but uh, the, if the rights are, uh, or if the people that upload the, the, the content uh, allow us, it's possible. But, uh, I will not download the video. I will take a shortcut, just copy the link because it's faster and we, we can, as you can see, it's possible to stream the video from Europeana and add annotations to the video. Okay. This is one, one example. Uh, Regarding the integration, it's also possible to integrate uh, with uh, another blog, website. Uh, uh, it's possible also to stream videos from the other tool, the Wevex tool. It's possible to stream videos from them. And uh, if you want to, to, I don't know, to publish our your work on your website or your personal blog or so on, it's possible to do it. Uh, you just need to let me choose another video the first one okay just by clicking here it's possible to if you want to embed in your blog you have here the html code if you just want to share the link it's possible to share the link but we uh, the difference between uh this and the motion notes too, it's when you share the link, you are not able to edit or to access the properties of the annotations. You can only only see the, the annotations. Okay, the, the tracks are 
uh, customizable if you want to share them or not. And um, also the, the background color, it's possible to customize here the, the properties. Okay, um, let me see. I think I covered uh, everything from my side. Now I will give the, the floor to my colleague, João, which will uh, talk about the pose estimation. Okay, thank you, Chloe. Uh, let me just share my screen. And I believe everyone can see this now. So Chloe just finished uh, presenting the motion node system and highlighting the newly implemented 3D functionalities. So now we'll go over the new pose estimation features before proceeding to the actual hands-on workshop. So pose estimation algorithms, as the name suggests, basically uh, try to identify a person's body parts or key points, as we also call them, and then link them together to, uh, to form a simple uh, skeletal image of that person. This by itself is extremely useful across different areas, such as in sports, where an athlete's, the quality of an athlete's movement is directly related to their performance. So it's extremely important in those scenarios. And as you can imagine, by having a simple version of somebody's pose or posture, it becomes substantially easier to actually analyze it by, for instance, uh, visualizing the angles between the joints or even determining some patterns. And here we're going to take a look at pose estimation uh, by using some videos from our colleagues at Ped Shumbu containing traditional Portuguese dances, which better fit this project's context. So just like Rui, just shows we can come here. And the first one we're going to see is this one. So firstly, we're going to activate the pose estimation static view feature, uh, which will allow you to see what I was just talking about. So here, what you can see is that we have the key points I talked about. You can see the knees, you can see the elbows, which are then linked to form this simplistic view. In this case, this base version is optimized to accurately follow the people's movement without losing synchronicity, which is which can be a problem when we're working with a web browser. And since the key points are embedded onto the system, it makes it for other things to be possible, such as downloading the, vid the video in the future. But uh, it's also important to note uh, something here, which I'm going to, to highlight, which is for the next features we're going to take a look at to properly function the algorithm must cover some important factors, such as occlusion. Here you can see that at times, when people are moving, the knees pass in front of each other. And that can become a problem when you're trying to keep track of one of the knees, for instance. But in this case, you can see that even though that happens, the algorithm still keeps track of the knee even when it goes behind the other one. And this is very important. So for the next feature, I'm going to turn off static view so we can move on to dynamic annotations. For that, we just turn for the estimation on again. And we call it dynamic annotations because unlike static annotations, like the ones we showed, I can, uh, for instance, show this simple 3D model. When I import it and I place it here, what you expect is that as soon as I play the video, this annotation will not move accordingly to the video. It will only move if I for some reason decide to change its position. However, when you're trying to analyze a given person's movement, you can put yourself in the position of a dancer or a dance instructor, and you want to highlight something, it can be useful to have a visual cue where you actually identify the movement and the annotation you drew followed that same pattern. So here we can simulate something like that where we want to, for instance, highlight the movement of this gentleman's knee. So if I pause here and I select the knee, I can now create a drawing annotation just as an example, but pretty much any annotation uh, we just covered can be added here. And now, unlike the traditional static annotations we saw before, when I play the video, it will actually follow the movement. And like I just said, it's not only useful due to being a, a good visual cue, but it can also be useful to keep the audience's attention span active. Now, for the next couple of features that I want to show you, I'm going to change to another video, also from our colleagues at Petroom. Which... I'm so sorry, João. Can I just ask, because I think for the audience, it would be nice to see the dance first, because then they, they don't have any idea of how the dance goes. Sure, sure, I can play. Yes, it would be great, thank you. With the sound, if possible. 
Uh, no, the sound is not working. But this is basically the gist of it. So now I'm going to show the other dance. The it actually has a funny name in Portuguese, and when it's roughly translated to English, it's also funny, which is the little foot dance, if you will. Uh, and the idea here, we're going to demonstrate two features. The first of which uh, has its basis on when people are dancing or when there's moving, movement happening, there can be a lot of distracting factors, such as if you can imagine a dance recital or a dance presentation, it's very common to have more than one person. And when that happens, there can be people moving in front of each other and there can be objects going around and that can make the environment somewhat chaotic. So with this tiny window here, the idea is that you can observe the structure of the skeletal image of the person in a neutral background without any distractions. And on the, in this case, we could exchange between different people, but since we only have one, we have only this person zero uh, uh, demonstrated. But it's also useful if you want to, for instance, uh, compare or use another person as reference, because we could uh, simulate that if there was somebody else here and it was moving at a different pace than the other one, you can just place it side by side. And when it's being played, you can uh, highlight and see, see this person move before you actually did. It's uh, one of the examples. And with this system in place, we can also have other interesting uh, ideas developed. And for this, we had picked two simple examples here. Uh, as you can see, we have the arms up movement and also the legs open movement. This is very simple. It's just to demonstrate what's possible. And in this case, the idea is that if you want to, at the same time as the video is being played, you want to analyze what movements are being performed and by whom, you can just take a look at the table and as he moves along, you can see now the movement is not being executed. And as soon as he opens the leg again, it's again executed. And this is useful, obviously, while you're watching the video, but it can also be used to draw up some statistics in the end, such as how many people did a, speci a specified movement and for how long. And with this, we conclude our presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm going to give my words uh, to the final notes to Professor Nun. Okay, thank you very much. Um, just uh, uh, don't have really much to say after the presentation. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to say that we have the tool available and the URL is the one you can see uh, on top. So if you want to try it uh, at some time and then email us if you have suggestions or questions, uh, we are available. Uh, it's also on the chat, but it will be um, available when the video is also uh, made available. I'm not sure if there are any questions now. Okay, it seems that we don't have questions. So I guess we'll um, we'll conclude the session of, of the, the presentation here, uh, thanking all the participants and also thanking to the people that, that spoke and of course did the work. Uh, my colleagues um, that, that are here in this session. So I don't know if anyone wants to say something else. Otherwise, thank you very much uh, for participating and for watching the video as well later on. Yeah, thank you so much for everyone. Um, if there is any questions, please ask. Thank you, Valentina. Yeah, thank you. We don't know if uh, are we going to do this the hands on session or depending on there being audience or not. I see. There is some audience, maybe yeah. shy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll be available for for demonstrating, but uh, if you don't want to do it now, it's going to be available. Uh, yeah, that will be available on YouTube. So. Thank you, everyone. I will stop recording and wish you a good day. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs>